Well, uh, wonderful morning, Praise God. I was thinking this morning uh, uh, some wonderful thoughts, and uh, one of them kind of that came to me is that uh, oftentimes, and we all are subject to this, oftentimes we really don't put a whole lot of thinking into some words. We just don't. They, we just go on to the next word, <laughs> don't we? In the sentence or the conversation and um, reading uh, something just recently about how people, we really don't know people that well. We know them just a little bit on the surface because we don't dig into their, their life very much. And we're just that way. We, we kind of ride on the surface. We do the same thing with words and even in the Word of God. So the Lord admonishes us. He, uh, he talks to us about being hard of hearing and dull of heart or hardened hearts and things like that nature. And uh, so I like to, I like it when the Lord stops me on a word. You know what I'm saying? Because even this morning, I started thinking about time. How in the word it says that time will be no more. And we just go on from that, don't we? We just go on, you know, we just step right out of that word and keep living in time. Well, I just encourage you to think about that a little bit. Uh, there will be no more time. We're going to have to change our vocabulary. We're going to lose a lot of words when there's no more time. <laughs> you know, like before and after. <laughs> Tomorrow. <It's gone. laughs> It's just now, it's I am, there's no I was, there's no I will be, it's just I am. <laughs> wow. But I just got the little thought into that, I want to, that's beyond me. That's beyond, so that, and that kind of played into that prayer this morning about the mystery. A lot of mysteries in the Word, uh, but we know the mystery writer. God is the one Praise who unfolds God. the mystery and so on. But don't shy away from the mystery. If if you happen to stop on a word that you don't really know or understand completely, it may take you down a few rabbit trails. So uh, get, get into his word, and, and uh, he is the word, you know? <laughs> uh, before, there, there's nothing before him in his word. When he spoke, things happened that weren't there before. So. Hallelujah. His word, yes. Say it's that changing. a little louder, Philip. I said, well, he's the word, so his word makes things happen, so he's the word, and so he makes things happen, so he can't do it. <laughs> he, he just, because it happens. You just keep on talking to him. Just word after word. Just word after word. It actually makes sense. <laughs> yes, it did. Yes, it does. It does. I had to think about it for a second. Yeah, it does. It does. It does. Yeah. So, today I want to talk a little bit about strength. You know, you know, we have we know about physical strength, and we know that there are a lot of times uh, parallels our physical strength to spiritual, or or things physical. The Lord uses them to speak about a spiritual application. He does that. So there's more to strength than we think. When we talk about some of the strengths that are in the Bible. He's actually uh, uh, applying them and referring to spirituality. All right, so strengthened, this is the title of the message, strengthened to rejoice in, a big word, reconciliation. Strengthened to rejoice in a change of attitude. That's what reconciliation means. To be reconciled means to change the way of thinking. The miracle, I, I call reconciliation a miracle because we can change our mind. God reconciled the world through his shed blood. He changed his mind on how he thought about us in that we were enemies, we were rebellious, we were destined to die and just be away from him, separated from him. This is a huge thought. Not only did he change his mind through himself becoming our savior to save us out of our rebellion, 
but we changed our mind toward him. Amen. At one time we are rebellious. No, do it my way. And we changed our mind to do it his way. Think about him. Amen. Am I loud enough for everybody or do I need to turn this mic on? Is anybody not here? Sarah, can you hear every word I'm saying? Yeah, I hear you. Good. Okay. Um, so reconciliation, the miracle of being able to change your mind. Change your mind. In Romans chapter 5, beautiful scripture here, in, in, in referencing to strength. Okay? Strength, not just physical, but we can relate to strength in the spiritual through what it feels like to be weak. When you haven't had your protein, you feel weak. And somebody says, come, let's take a walk. A nice walk in the country. Uh, I'm too tired. So you know what being weak without strength can do in the physical, same thing in the spiritual. You can be so weak that you don't call on the name of the Lord. Mm -hmm. You can be so weak spiritually you don't even pray. You don't even think about God. You can just go headlong in life thinking it's all about you. You don't even think about others sometimes. It's possible, isn't it? Yes. I know I do. We, we're just that way. So, in verse, uh, chapter 5, verse 6, For when we were still without strength, in due time, Christ died for our, the ungodly. What kind of strength is he talking about there? When we were still without strength, here comes time. In due time, it says, Christ came, God in the flesh, Emmanuel, call his name Jesus, for he is Savior. He will save his people from their sins. That guy, he comes. And he lives his 33 years expressing God's character, loving people, compassionate, guiding, uh, very witty, I'm sure, very Jewishly witty and funny. But he had a purpose, and his purpose was to reconcile God to man and man to God. And he did that through suffering on before and during the cross and he died on the cross the man Christ Jesus the Messiah so he says without with, with here we are in a sinful state of mind state of spirit state of body dying of whatever because of sin that's why we're dying the soul that sinned shall die and death entered in when Adam and Eve sinned so here we are dying in a sinful world, and God comes into our world. Praise God. What a miracle. To change his mind toward us, his attitude toward us, while we're still rebellious, living sinful. He came as an example of his love for us. For God so loved the world that he came in to and he gave, out of his heart of love, he gave the, the greatest gift of all. Isn't that something? It's beautiful. So, he, then he goes on to say, For scarcely a righteous man will one die, yet perhaps for a good man someone would even dare to die. But God demonstrates. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, and that while we were sinners, Christ died for us. Christ died for us. Thank you, Lord. Verse 8. That was verse 8. Verse 9. Much more then, having now been justified by his blood. Justified never sin. I've been brought into a relationship now. Though your sins are as scarlet, I will make them white as snow. Amen. I cannot do that on my own. What, a, what an exchange of gifts has been given. What Jesus went through, through the passion before he was on the cross, through the beatings and all of that, and then on the cross for hours in agony, taking on the sin of the world. And what do we have to do in exchange? 
we have to repent, say, I'm sorry, Dad. I'm sorry. I've been rebellious, headstrong, willful, want to do it my way. I can do it, Dad. I can do it. I can do it on my own. I don't need you. Oh, yes, we do. We sure get ourselves in a fix, don't we? The whole world right now is in a fix because we're outside of Christ, outside of God, outside of following him. Not, not everybody, but a portion of the evil that came into the world after Eve succumbed to that temptation. Now they know. Now they know. God said. They know evil. So, what is our exchange? We repent. Say, I'm sorry. And we receive what he has done for us. What an exchange. And when we do that, our attitude toward God changes. Oh, he loves me. Oh, I love him. All of a sudden we get this change in our attitude toward other people. Oh, that person I don't like, I, as a matter of fact, I hate that person. I don't like the way they talk, the way they walk, or what they wear, the what perfume they wear. I just do not ever see that person again. Ever had that feeling? All of a sudden you love that person. You want to hear their story. How'd you get to be the way you are? See, we get changed. An attitude toward God gets changed in our attitude toward one another, our attitude toward ourselves. Even changes. Praise God. For in verse 10, if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. What does that mean? What does that mean? How is that? Do we ever think about, we think about the cross, but what, cap, what happened after the cross that's so important to us today? What do we believe about Jesus? He died, yes, but he rose again, and he showed himself to hundreds and hundreds of people at the same time. Why did he do that? He wanted to make rock solid sure that we knew without a doubt it was him. He rose from the dead. He didn't just appear to his apostles, but he, he was Amen. evident. And he was around for 40 days. He would come in and out to people to reassure them, to comfort them, to encourage them, to strengthen them, their faith in him. So much so that these guys who ran away from him in the garden all gave their life for him. Except for John. I love verse 11 because it says, and not only that. <laughs> Would you like some whipped cream on your Sunday? <laughs> Would you like a cherry on top of the whipped cream? <laughs> I love God. He says, and not only that, and I had to put two exclamation marks in my Bible. Not only that, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus we now can have the strength to rejoice in God because he's reconciled us. We who did not know love the way we really know love through him. Now we're rejoicing in God through Jesus. Yes. Through Jesus. What he has done. He poured out his love that we could then in return love him. Hallelujah. So he says, and not only that, but we rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus, through whom we have now received the reconciliation. Wow. James talks about a double-minded person. Don't think you're going to receive anything in your prayers if you're double-minded. What does double-minded mean? Reconciliation. What kind of an attitude do you have toward God, and what do you think his attitude toward you is? Are you waffling in that? Uh, sometimes I believe, sometimes I don't believe. Sometimes, oh, Jesus loves me, sometimes I don't think he loves me so much. Huh? Cool. Don't vacillate in our, rec in our reconciliation. We need to be rock solid through Christ, having now received. I have received it, it's rock solid, 
and I stand on my faith. There's a lot of things I don't understand, why certain things happen, especially why things, bad things happen to good people and good things happen to bad people. You know, if you just leave it at that, um, that could be a burr under your saddle. You know what I mean? Your ride is going to be uncomfortable. If you got a burr under your saddle, it's going to be an uncomfortable ride. Yeah. So we need to be rock solid in our reconciliation. Ephesians 3 talks a little bit here about a prayer. This is Paul's prayer. 16 through 19. Ephesians 3, 16 through 19. And in his prayer, he said that he would, the Lord would grant you according to the riches of his glory. That surpasses our imagination. To be strengthened with might through his spirit. Now we're talking strength in a spiritual nature. To be strengthened with power. Silver and gold have I none, but what I do have I give to you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. Are we seeing that today? Yes, we are. In some places, that's happening. And I think it's going to be more widespread as we see time passing. So the spiritual application is we're being strengthened with power through his Holy Spirit. Yes. Didn't Jesus say that? You will receive power when you receive the Holy Spirit. I want some of that. <laughs> huh? Isn't that my, my response right there? I want some of that because there are times when I'm kind of weak in spirit. Are we instant in prayer? Somebody asks you to pray just anywhere on the street at, at a meal. Somebody says, hey, by the way, would you lead us in prayer? Um, got to think of what to say. No, you're instant in prayer. Why? Because we're strengthened with the power of Jesus Christ who reconciles. He's in me. I'm living through him. Hallelujah. What a, what a, what a message. <laughs> strengthened with might through the power of his spirit in the inner man. And here's a, uh, what he's going to uh, give us, a little gift here. It's actually a really big gift. That Christ would dwell in, dwell in your hearts through faith, being rooted and grounded in love. That's how our attitude can change toward one another. If we receive the reconciled love of God in us, then we put it back toward God, and then we shall run out to other people. And then he goes on to, to say that we would know the volume of the love of God. Not just, the, not just the love that's right here in my, my being, but the love that fills the height, the depth, the width, from east to west, to north to south, from up to down, fills the volume to know that kind of love. Boy, that puts it on us, doesn't it? I'm going to have to have strength to have that much kind of love, knowledge of love, huh? I could not comprehend that. But that's what it says here, that we would be able to comprehend with all the saints what the, the width, the length, the depth, the height, to know the love of Christ with passes knowledge. Whoa, you just went beyond me. <laughs> Whoa, pull on the reins. huh? That's what I mean about thinking about what the words are saying. We don't just get on to the next word or the next line, but it's just... Park it right there. What in the world are you talking about, Lord? Is this for me? Well, it's kind of interesting because I went to the back of the book and I found Ephesus. It was a letter in Revelation written to Ephesus. And these guys that Paul was praying for left their first love. Wow. And to this day, right now, there is no Ephesus. There is no Ephesus. So there is no church at Ephesus anymore. Pretty amazing, isn't it? He said, if you've left your first love and if you don't repent, I'm going to come and just take your candlestick right out of your church. 
It's gone. It's not there anymore. So I guess when I read that, a lot of times just go right over it. When we think about Ephesus as being a thriving church and so on, it was then, and some things happen in the church. Some of this stuff, this letter that he wrote, evidently they didn't keep rereading re this letter and repenting. Do we continue? Do we need to continue to repent yes. as Christians? Yes. Oh, it's a done deal. I'm saved and so on. No, we need to repent. Jesus said. Uh, and his prayer teaching us to pray, give us this day our daily bread, and then right after that, forgive us our trespasses. Oh, you mean I messed up today? I didn't even know. I had a bad thought, wrong thought, a sinful thought. Where did the sinful thought come to Eve? Where did, where did that come from? It was in her head as she was tempted by someone. We get tempted by the things that are happening around us, by people, by situations, and things. Just things. We get tempted. So we want to have the strength and the power, the might of God's power in us. So, and if we sin, the Bible says, huh? Whew. I'm glad that was in there. <laughs> huh? If we sin, we have an advocate, a lawyer, a go-between between us and the judge. Our lawyer is the best lawyer. There's not a better one. It's Jesus Christ, the righteous. Yes. The one who is righteous. And I am righteous, right standing with him, because I have accepted his blood. I have asked for forgiveness of my sin. I said this wrong thing. It really actually was a sin. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I really am sorry. I shouldn't have said it. I'm going to go apologize to that person. I'm sorry I said something about you or this and that. You know what I'm saying? That's Bible. That's Bible. So be ye reconciled. That's what the scripture says. Be ye reconciled. So that reconciled means change my mind. Change my mind. How do I change my mind? The Word of God says that our minds are transformed, changed by the Word of God. Yes. In another Bible verse, it says, Washing of the water is poured on, Lord, by the Word. We go outside, hey, all I had to do is just, yeah, I need to clean them. I didn't get do anything to get these things dirty. I didn't go rubbing on them or anything. It's just out here in the air. Is there dirt in the air? Yeah. Is there sin all over the place? Yeah. Is there temptation out there? Yeah. Be of good cheer. I've overcome all that stuff. Just confess if we've been wrong, if we've, if we've done some sin and so on. And to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge, that you would be filled with all the fullness of God. Hallelujah. Whoa. That's huge. Ephesus. Ephesus. But listen to this in verse 21. To him be glory in the church at Ephesus. But this letter was to be read to the churches, Smyrna and, and all the rest of them, Pergamos and so on. But he says, To him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. That's us. Here we are talking about a church that is no more. Most people have probably got dispersed and moved out. And the, the word of God got spread throughout the world and we're here today because of it. So with that I go to Psalms 18. And I'm going to close with that. Psalms 18. Just a few words here that are so important. So important. I will love you, O oh Lord. I will. I will. My will is to love you. My will is to do your will. And what's God's will? To love, have us love him with all our heart, soul, strength, and mind. That's God's will for us. And I will to do his will. He starts out his psalm. I love it. And it, this thought is throughout the Bible. It's repeated. I will love you, O oh Lord, 
my strength. You see, if I didn't have his strength, I could not be reconciled. He, he may love the world and give his only begotten son, but there are a lot of folk that don't receive it to be reconciled. So he said, I'm going to love you, Lord. Oh, God, I love you. You're my strength. You're the one who gave me the strength to love you back. I heard your voice. I heard your voice. It said, I love you. I love you. I love you. Hmm. He says, the Lord is my rock. I heard that this morning. Freedom's talking about it in Psalm 95. Take a look. What's a rock? God is my rock? What's a rock? I wonder, do we stop at that word and say, Lord, what's a rock? Didn't uh, the Lord talk to Peter about being a rock? You know? Change his name to rock. <laughs> You're going to be called rock from now on. We got a dog named Rocky. Yeah. We didn't name him that, but somebody loved him that. And he loves eating rocks. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love eating the rock of the word. Yes. Jesus is the rock. I love to eat the rock. I eat rocks. Yeah. Build our house on the rock. Huh? Build my house on the rock. He's my, my rock, he says, and fortress and deliverer. What is our thought on a fortress? Have we ever seen a fortress? Have has anyone seen one uh, in real life, a fortress? I've seen them down there in Pine City in Minnesota. They, they have the wooden fort that they had way back in the 1800s when they came. They had to, the pioneers had to build a fort to protect them against the enemy. And we've had forts like that built. Forts down in uh, St. Augustine, Florida. They have a huge fort out there. It's said to be the oldest city in the, in the country. They built a fort, a fortress. So when the boats came up to take over St. Augustine, they went, wow, look at that fortress. Huh? That's the Lord for us. He's our fortress. We can run into, literally, the name of the Lord, Janice. Talk about the name of the Lord above every name. The Bible says the name of the Lord is a mighty strong tower. The righteous run into it and are whew, saved. Yes. I'm saved. I'm saved. So, so Lord, I'm going to love you because you've given me strength. You've given me strength to rejoice in your reconciliation. The strength that I can, hallelujah, rejoice. What does rejoice mean? There's a good one. I wrote in the bottom of my page. Re means to do it again. Um, re, 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 re. <laughs> do it again. Joy. What do you mean? Rejoice. I'm going to be joyful. I'm going to be joyful. I'm going to be joyful. I'm going to have strength to lift my hands. Without strength, I can't. Without spiritual strength, what are those people raising their hands for? They sure are a demonstrative group. What are they jumping up about? I don't feel that. Well, you gotta get the strength. You gotta have the strength to go bouncing up and down and raising your hands. Where's that strength? Spiritual. And it goes into the physical. And then if we have feet to walk and go out and preach the gospel. What, how do we do that? Jesus said, you're going to receive power to do that. It's a, a spiritual strengthening. Hallelujah. So, I will love you, O oh Lord, my strength. My strength. I will call upon the Lord, who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. Praise the Lord. They're out there. They're in here. Huh? Got any enemies in here? <laughs> Go to your closet in here and pray. <laughs> scatter those enemies. He says he'll scatter them. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, I will love you. Oh, Lord. My strength.